we're celebrating this half hour uh, some more of our discussions around the 25th anniversary of the Dave Ramsey Show. And as you know, the 25th anniversary of the Dave Ramsey Show doesn't occur uh, only on the back of Dave Ramsey. Uh, We've had a whole lot of people on our team over a whole lot of years, 25 years, helping us grow this. And uh, in the studio to talk about some of the old days is one of our operating board members. If you didn't know, we have uh, 10 folks on our operating board. Three of them are ladies uh, and EVPs, our CMO, an EVP over the church area, and the EVP over the consumer channel is Suzanne Sims, executive vice president. And uh, so we thought it'd be fun because she started here a long time ago um, as an attempt. And uh, further back than that, we can go if we need to. But uh, uh, so we thought it'd be fun to get her on here because she came up through the ranks of the broadcast area, the, what we call the radio department in those days. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited. So Very this, honored. All these years, this is your first time put the microphone on. It is. And it's probably best that way. <laughs> well, there's been a lot of... Uh, uh, been a lot of uh, uh, trash talking around it. I can tell you that for sure. They've been oh, giving you a hard time. It's good to know. Yeah, no, okay. they've been giving you a hard time. No, they did it to your face. Yeah, they did a little bit to my face. I'm, I'm a little bit of a loose cannon. Don't have a great filter, so there's always this concern about giving Suzanne a microphone. Give, give them the dump button. Finger hovered over the dump button in there, so just in case. But so, how long? Tell folks how long you've been here. I've been here 16 years. I started in May of 2001, and that was the tent part where mm-hmm. I was two days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I love my story because it's not just my story. It's like a really awesome story for the company. And there's like a whole handful of these stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, those of us that started in the early days and we did whatever we, whatever needed to be done. We didn't have titles. We didn't have official roles. Some of us, we just came in and we were scrappy and we did what needed to be done. And I was doing administrative work two days a week. Mm-hmm. And you stopped by my little tiny cube one day and said, have you thought about working full time? Because we really need some people in some full time roles. And long story short, um, I went full time in September of that year. Hmm. Okay. And Suzanne and Laura Johnson, who used to be the phone screener, social producer, now is in charge of all things video around here. Um, as far as the broadcast stuff, parts of it go, uh, you guys were in youth group together. Yes, we were. We've grown up together. She was in my wedding. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah. And so both, and, and uh, Sharon and I worked with the youth. Uh, we were like young adults working with the teenagers back yes. in those days. So you guys were in the youth group when we worked with it. And then both of you end up working here. Mm-hmm. Uh, several others from the youth group ended up working here over the years. Uh, but uh, come in, you know, I just remembered, you know, Suzanne was very bright. She had a big intellect, always a big smart girl in college, in high school and all this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, somebody said something about, you know, we need a temp in here to do something. And uh, Suzanne can do that. And I said, yeah, she'll be great at that. Um but then, you know, you got in there and you started having fun. And uh, that evolved over the years through quite a radio career over the last 16 years. So you went from temp to doing what? You had a vision for a role. We called it director of affiliate relations. And no one else in the industry had ever done this and to this day has never done this. Um, you said, Suzanne, your job is to build relationships with our radio stations, with the decision makers get to know them and super serve them because we are self-syndicated and we fight for every clear we get. We fight for every radio station on our list because we're up against huge companies that own um, that own their own radio shows and, and we're up against them. And so if we build relationship. We do everything relationally here with vendors, with clients, just everything we do. And you saw the need to do that in the radio industry and how effective that would be. And it has been because they've become our friends. So your first role was affiliate relations. Yes. I hadn't forgotten that. You went from admin to that, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. And so you're like 20-something years old, and you start calling yeah. these these corporate yeah. geeks at yep. these radio stations mm-hmm. uh, who sometimes are not nice. And uh, sometimes they're very nice people, but yeah. initially they like, you want to build relationships? <laughs> Bite this. Yeah, not a chance. they're a little bit afraid of it. They yeah. don't know necessarily what to do with it because no other radio show ever, ever tried to build a relationship with them. Nobody ever cared about them mm-hmm. as a person. Right. Just trying to do a transaction. Right. Hmm. Okay. And so you, your first, what did you do doing that at first? 
I had a spreadsheet and I would call and I would do my best to figure out who the decision maker was. That was not always easy um, because a lot of times there were a lot of um, people wearing multiple hats at stations. But if you could figure it out, I would just learn about them, like who's their favorite sports team and when's their birthday and when's their spouse's birthday. And they would get a birthday card from us on their birthday and their spouse would get a birthday card from us. And we would just find ways to super serve them. And I had a regular schedule of when I would contact them and just see how they were doing and see how the station was doing. And I would keep up with the ratings on each of those stations so we could have, you know, a, an intelligent conversation about what was going on in their market and what their world was looking like and, um, and how we were a part of that. Um, and usually there was a play to get us a better time slot, you know, by, by watching those ratings. And so that was all a part of the job and it was all done very relationally. And there are a few women in the industry. Very few. Very few. And so I found that, you know, a lot of these program directors, they were the ones I was calling on initially. They would sit in these, you know, control rooms all day with very little interaction with anyone. And so when a woman would call with a nice tone and caring about them, it it caused them to actually spend time talking to me which really baffled my boss at the time, Bill Hampton. He couldn't believe they would take my call. Well, because he couldn't get them to talk to him. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So uh, you ended up actually several years in a row winning the award of uh, top female in radio. One of the, one of radio's most influential women. Yeah, they do. Radio Inc. does that, that, um, that issue every year. And I've been honored to be a part of that for sure, because With us being self-syndicated, the industry doesn't always know what to do with us. We do everything so different, and the titles and roles that we have are not exactly like the titles and roles of all these other radio companies, Um, but they have been recognizing us for a few years now. Cool stuff. Suzanne Sims joins us for a half hour as we walk down memory lane just a little bit here uh, on our 25th anniversary. She was one of our operating board members, uh, executive vice president of the company these days, been with us 16 years all the way from a temp admin to uh, one of the uh, top roles in the entire organization today. And broadcast is just one of the many things that falls under her purview today. But uh, she's been with us on the radio thing all the way up. So interesting to talk about and think about where we've come from to be where we are today. We'll talk about that a little bit more in this next segment. This walk down memory lane right here on the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey, this is Dr. Les Parrott in Seattle. 25 years? Are you kidding me? That's an incredible milestone, and it is such an honor to get to celebrate this. Dave, you and your team have produced one of the great radio broadcasts of all time. And I got to tell you, it's such an honor to be on it on occasion and to share the speaking stage with you. Congratulations, friend. You're amazing. Thank you, Les. Les is one of our speakers at the SMART Conference. Always speaks on marriage and is very popular. And he and Rachel Cruz will be doing a money and marriage event just outside of Nashville here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, November the 13th. Uh, That gives Rachel time to get back from um, uh, maternity leave. And so, yeah, come and make that happen, guys. That's a great event. You don't want to miss out on that. We're doing a walk down memory lane here as we do 25th anniversary celebration all throughout this year. Uh, Coming to a head actually up in September. We're going to stop talking about it after September for those of you that are sick of it. (laughs) But uh, Suzanne Sims is with us, one of our operating board members and executive vice president with our company, one of the three ladies that sits on our operating board and uh, was uh, has been awarded the uh, one of the most influential women in radio awards several times and started with us in temp admin role, worked up through uh, director of affili- affiliate relations, and uh, we were just talking about the old days. So how many affiliates did we have when you came on board? We had about 30, 30-ish. 30, and we have 588 today. Today we're in seven out of the top 10 markets and 20 of the tw- top, top 25 markets, and... Uh, Phoenix, Arizona now, KTAR is our top, and I just saw some ratings the other day for that. We just own that market ratings-wise. Thank you, Phoenix. We appreciate Mm. you. We number one uh, talk show in the city in this time slot, 
And uh, so if you're listening to someone else in this time slot, you're not listening to the number one show. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you making us that. We don't brag on ourselves enough, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. It's and it's really exciting what's happened um, even in the past year and a couple of years. Like to be in all of those top markets and to be on good stations with good listenership, it is it is really, really fun. And really, I mean, we took, we, we would get take almost any time slot, almost anywhere just to get our foot in the door back in the day. Now we're pretty picky because we're kind of the 800 pound gorilla nowadays. Uh, and you know, if they want to You were us. still hardcore in the early days though, Suzanne, we need the live time slot. Let's work on the live time slot because you always knew. And to this day, it, it holds true. When we're on live, our listeners can interact with us and we are a caller driven show. Our show is about their lives that's our content. And that's the richness of our show. And so, yeah, you're right. But we still pushed them really hard. So you moved from affiliate relations and, and uh, on, a, you know, to start with, you were just kind of calling and building relationships. Mm-hmm. We we're talking about that. But later on, it, it came to really you managing that relationship and having some real difficult conversations with people trying to break a contract oh, yes, yes, and yes. some stuff like that. And a whole other side of you started coming out, the <laughs> kind of the, the hard butt here. I mean, you're tough, oh, tough. It's a tough nice. business. It's a rough and tumble business, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, we were just amazed at how contracts meant nothing to some of these people. Like, we're such... Um, relational people. Integrity is a big deal for us. And we were amazed at how many times we would have a contract and they would call and say, hey, we're going to drop your show. We would say, no, no, you you have to carry us another year. (laughs) Look at what you signed. Um, And so there was some of that we've had to deal with. Yeah. What, what, um, uh, you moved from there and what was your next title? What did you do? The next one was vice president of broadcast. We started calling it the broadcast department um, and so I was VP of broadcast. So I was overseeing the business side of mm-hmm. the radio show, which is the, the advertising that we sell and the way that we monetize the show mm-hmm. in addition to those relationships. Okay. So you started running the P&L at that yes. point. And mm-hmm. so the, all the national ad accounts, the local affiliates and the ads mm-hmm. that we do there yep. all fall under that mm-hmm. affiliate relations. And, um, so, uh, Brian Mayfield was, uh, I think brought in to sell at that time, right? Yes, he was. During that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has ended up being the vice president yes. of that area as you've moved on yeah. up over the entire consumer division. Yeah, he's done an amazing job. He's just taken it to a whole new level. Yeah, the, he has. He really has. But back in those days, um, somebody came up, and I don't remember where this came from, with this idea to do something that had never been done in the industry, and that was the Affiliate Executive Council. Mm-hmm. Talk about how, what that is and how that came about, because from a business perspective, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and again, it's never been replicated, but and no one ever will because it requires too much effort, um, but we're willing to do that, and it's paid off. It's been amazing. My memory was that there was an executive in the industry. There were several, but there was a key executive in the industry, Sean um, Compton. Mm-hmm that had a conversation with you one time and said, listen, if you could figure out how to take the decision makers, specifically program directors from the radio stations and just pull them in once a year and really wine and dine them and super serve them and give them a chance to have a place to talk to you and give you feedback, that would be huge for you relationally. And, um, you see things really big. So in typical day fashion, you took his little minuscule idea that he pet- pitched at you and you came back to us and said, guys, we're blowing this up. We're going to do a five-star event. We're going to bring in at the time, the first time we did it 10 years ago, we brought them into Nashville, uh, into our home turf and we wined and dined them for a couple of days and um, took really good care of them, made them feel really special, but also gave them great content. They got to hear you teach some great entree leadership lessons. Uh, they've gotten to hear from other speakers over the years and from some of our personalities. And we give them a forum to talk to us and give us feedback on what they are dealing with, the challenges they have at their radio stations and how we can help. Um, and it's been amazing. We do a quarterly conference call with them where we do the similar kind of thing. We give them good content. We hear from them. And then once a year, we have that five-star event, which if we're being honest, we don't mind that event. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. Um, they've become our friends. And so it's it's having fun with friends, but also it's really intense um, 
relationship building. Yeah, we've been doing that 10 years to yes. the point that there were only two people, because the radio business is a lot of turnover. Mm-hmm. There were only two people been to every single event. They both retired this yes, year. Yes, they did. Robert Hallmark mm-hmm. out in uh, Texas and Henry Caponia uh, with our uh, affiliate in Grand Rapids, mm-hmm. Michigan. Robert's in middle of Odessa and uh, has retired. But we're having Robert back just because yeah he has nothing to do with nothing now but we just, <laughs> we love, just robert. love robert yeah. and he's coming this year to the one yeah, but they've... you know we the, you guys i mean you and amy severson took that thing and brian and just jacked it up to where it was a it, it is a world-class five-star event i mean like to give you guys an example we rented out ellis island mm-hmm. with the statue of liberty we were in new york one year and did a private dinner in the intake hall in ellis island so picture this we all get on a private uh, yacht and ride across uh, the you know the bay with the Statue of Liberty at night sitting there. As we come up, we get off the dock. There's candle lined lined walkways up. We come in. There's uh, actors playing musical instruments that look like immigrants, as if mm-hmm. you were just walking in during the Ellis Island days. Mm-hmm. And then we go in and have a, a five star meal in there that was absolutely incredible. And we've done stuff like that that mm-hmm. are just world class type stuff. It's been a lot of fun to do. Yeah. But uh but nobody does that in the radio business. Oh no. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Most industries don't do that. I mean, it's just it's unheard of, but we take those relationships seriously and and it's paid off because the same ones come back year after year and if they get pressure to take our show off the air, that's gonna be hard for them to do because we're their friends and we've poured into them. And we do a great job on the air, too. But, uh, you know, the, but the radio business is real fickle. And mm-hmm. sometimes people just with the flip of a yep. switch will take your head off, you know. And so we weren't trying to uh, to schmooze somebody into doing something that they shouldn't do. I mean, but but we just wanted consideration. Yeah. Because we weren't always given that as a, as a standalone self-syndicated show. Even when show. we deserved it, yeah. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Well, congratulations. And Amy Severson that started that with that has just gotten a big, yes. big promotion. Yes. And she's moving so over exciting. to a vice president in a whole other area of the company. Mm-hmm. And she's another one just like you that started out at the very bottom yep. of the whole process. So that That's we've awesome. done we've done this together. That's how this show has happened, guys, is people like Amy and Laura and Blake and Suzanne and you know James and Kelly, all these guys. This show has done that because of the quality of team behind the scenes. Um I get all the credit because I'm in the spotlight, but the truth is it's not me. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button to get the latest content and check out these other great clips from the show.